journey of self discovery as this word suggests what comes to your mind when you just hear this title journey of self discovery what comes to your mind please feel free unmute and answer as i told you it's interactive i i feel like you know it's something that it helps you to like know more about yourself like very where good. you it helps you know more about yourself yes very nice what else and uh, it's like to unravel your inner soul yes unraveling and, and help okay. us in progress in a, uh, progress in spiritual things yes so the more you understand yourself the more there spiritual progress because we are not this material body we are spirit souls we reside in this body that's the beginning of bhagavad gita that's the first basic understanding of bhagavad gita very nice anyone else acha before that first tell me how many of you all have come on your own and how many have come because parents have said no no you must attend no no you must attend so how many are here because they are they want to be here okay i see a few hands raised that's nice that's nice and the ones who are not raising the hands and the ones who are not putting on the camera means they have been forced ha huh, tejas have you been forced no camera on no no in intimation as to why you're here what about satyanarayan satyanarayan is also not answering okay no problem fair enough yes tejas you've raised your hand so you're here because your parents have forced you to come or you you're here because you wanted to come unmute my friend unmute there's this nice button which says yes no no prabhu no force my parents ah no force okay that's good to hear that okay fine so as the title suggests journey of self discovery means basically introspection trying to understand who we are why we are here why are we happy sometimes why are we sad why do bad things happen sometimes to good people right who made this entire creation how does this creation function so perfectly and trying to understand all of this right okay now before that to understand yourself one important thing is what is the one thing that you seek in life if i were to ask you this one question what are you looking for in life what would your answer be everyone please unmute happiness. and answer yes in my happiness wonderful wonderful happiness okay anyone else anyone else happiness success. happiness okay success success yes okay radhika fine success but what will success give you success will give us happiness success will give you happiness okay so it boils down to happiness so the fact is we are all here in search of happiness that is what drives us right we are all searching for happiness that's why we start this session by understanding how we are in search of happiness now if you see on this entire globe there must be about what 6 billion plus people right and all of them have this one single agenda we all want to be happy and uh you know everybody's objective is just happiness so whatever we are doing whatever it is whatever endeavor whatever thing and it doesn't matter whether you are poor rich literate illiterate american indian uh you know everyone is just in search of this one thing which is happiness so that means this is what drives us so it's very important to understand how do we get you know to be happy and happiness is also different for different people see for somebody who's poor he's on the road for him a house is happiness right but for somebody who's already rich for him couple of more million will give him happiness but for somebody who is say residing in a village for him coming to mumbai and uh, you know living in this big city um, or going to new york and you know living in that city because i believe some of you all are from overseas also so for you all new york you know everyone wants to be over here 
Why? Because this is what you think will get you happiness. In fact, people are so crazy for happiness, they go to any extent. Sometime back, I had read, people have paid some 25,000 odd dollars booking land on the moon. Someday they want to make their houses there. So, you know, it's any extent we will go in that quest for happiness. Any extent. And this is in anticipation. A lot of it is in anticipation. Like I told you, I just read about this uh, case about people buying on the moon. So it doesn't matter how. Ultimately, they all just want to feel happy. And more importantly, they feel this will get them happiness. Later on, they feel that will get them happiness. So the definition of happiness for them is also changing. So let us start about understanding happiness with this little story. All of you kids, you've gone to school, right? Or you go to school. Holidays is something that you all like, right? An unexpected holiday too is always welcome. So once there was this little boy in a village and he was bored of school. He just wanted a holiday. So he just came up with this wonderful idea. He had a couple of uh, uh, lambs, you know. So he took a three of them and he labeled them one, two, and four. And he left them out into the school one fine evening. Next morning, when the cleaner came, he saw litter all over. And he was like, oh my God, you know, there's litter all over. So what am I going to do? He started cleaning. He went to the next classroom, again started cleaning. So he realized... There's a mess over here and these lambs have created all of this. So he went searching for these lambs and he found this lamb number one, right? And he tied her, the lamb, and then he searched for the other one. Finally managed to get lamb number two or also. And then he was searching, searching, searching. He finally managed to get lamb number four also. And then he kept searching, kept searching, kept searching, thinking there is a lamb number three. Now, when he didn't find that lamb number three, what he did is he called the principal. That, hello, you know, this is the thing that has happened and what are we going to do? The principal came rushing and he saw the mess and he realized one, two and four are there. Where is number three? That means number three will be somewhere. So then they began the search mission. Everyone, all the teachers, everyone is looking for lamb number three. And obviously time was passing. They realized we can't have school today. They declared a holiday. So the boy was happy. And the entire day they searched for lamb number three. Now, did they find the lamb number three? No. Because there wasn't any lamb number three. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is because this is the story of our lives. We are all looking for lamb number three. We have lamb number one, we have lamb number two, we have lamb number four. But we are in pursuit of lamb number three. And that is what searching for happiness is. What you have, you don't realize you have that. And you're always looking for something that you don't have. That is the paradox. We're always looking for things that we don't have. One important thing. People think Different things will get them happiness. You know, some, as I told you, look for happiness in things. Some look for happiness in silence, right? Some look for happiness in people. But the fact is, happiness lies within you. And the more we try to search for happiness outside, we're typically going to be searching for lamb number three. And we're going to be always not so happy. And always hankering for that happiness, right? But failing to derive happiness from one, two, and four. The things that we already have. So, you know, we humans, and again, one more thing. Is this happiness quotient that we're talking about is something which is common to all, right? Everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to have, have fun, whether it's a little child or whether it's an adult. Whoever it is, everybody just wants to have fun and be happy, right? So whether it's with your family, you want to have fun, right? With your family, whether it gives 
great food that's another again a thing that gives you a lot of pleasure school going to school having fun in, in school with teachers with friends that again gives you happiness it gives you a lot of fun right and at home you want to do that with your family with your parents you always whether it's even you know a little bit of musty and a little bit of sometimes you get whacking that's fine right but you enjoy that right right nama is shaking her head so i understand she likes even a whacking from her mom right or wrong no okay but you do but you do some have some fun with her right okay so this happiness is common to all but i will tell you one more story before i get a little more into this happiness levels uh happiness is something that we all seek and humans are the top topmost species as you know there are 84 lakh species and we're the most evolved species so when we pursue happiness the way we look at it is very different from the way rest of the other species look at happiness so let's look at another story which talks about happiness so once there was this king and uh, obviously he had all the luxuries all the comforts all the riches but he still didn't feel happy and uh, always kings are advised by good sages so once the sage came to his court and he just landed up you know discussing with him that you know sage i have everything but i'm still not really happy so the sage just looked up to him and he said okay do one thing come to your royal gardens and uh, he followed him and he said you look at these beautiful trees and flowers and you see these butterflies just go catch one of these butterflies the sage told the king and the king was like okay he is saying so i have to do it so he ran behind the butterfly in anticipation of catching it and he was trying 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 but he just didn't manage to catch it again he tried again he failed again he tried again he failed so this went on for some time and finally the king gave up he was like bas ho gaya and he went and he just sat down beneath the tree and when he sat down beneath the tree that's when suddenly a couple of butterflies came and sat on his forehead and he just smiled and the sage who was looking at him also smiled and the sage said happiness is just like this when you run after it you don't get it and when you just sit back it comes to you so the say the the king understood and this is again again a very important understanding for us because we are all as i said finding happiness but somewhere we don't find it coming and then we just kind of feel anxious sometimes uh anxiety sometimes distress sometimes angry right so it's very important to understand that happiness will come when it has to as i was telling you all species are looking for happiness and having fun whether it's the dolphins don't you think they have fun they do right whether it's insects whether it's animals whether it's birds all of them are basically looking for fun and happiness but there is a slight difference we humans can explore the deeper levels and the deeper deeper meanings of happiness which typically the other creations cannot because we humans are special do you agree we are special or not do you think we are normal like are we like animals or are we special we are special we are special right and what makes us special we will come to that so typically now let's understand between humans and animals we all look for happiness yes accepted but we are special so that if we are special that means there has to be some similarities and some differences between human and animals you all agree yes so let us probe a little further and see what are the common things anyone wants to try and tell me what are the commonalities between human and animals what are the common things between us uh, we all search for happiness and uh, we all do the happiness same. as i told you yes we all looking for happiness but what are the commonalities uh, leaving happiness let's talk about right. activities chalo 
They can also like travel and migrate and all. Okay, moving around, traveling. Okay, fine. And um, like uh, they can also see like sightseeing. Say so, okay, fair enough, fair enough. So I've uh, put it into four categories for simplification. What are the common things? And I've given an acronym for him for it. Okay, now the. Similarities, I've given an acronym SEED, S-E-E-D, broad-based. Everything will come in this. So what are the similarities? Sleeping, eating, entertaining or enjoying, and defending. We're both always wanting to defend ourselves, right? Okay, so let's now take these commonalities one by one. Okay, sleeping. Animals sleep, we sleep. But there is a big difference. Animals sleep anywhere and everywhere. We require plush beds, comfortable mattresses, air conditioning, pillows, so on and so forth. So basically, we complicate the simple process of sleeping. Now, have you ever noticed when you're walking on the roads, the dogs are sleeping. They are oblivious to the traffic, to the honking, you know, to the people walking. They are not affected, right? But early in the morning, if we hear a crow on our windowsill, our sleep gets disturbed. Yes? Or if someone bangs the door, our sleep gets disturbed. And if we don't have the right pillow or the right blanket or the right place, we cannot sleep. Right? So if we were to uh, be on a beach, how many people would get sleep on a beach without any accessories of sleep? Difficult. Right? Even a garden for that matter. Difficult. Right? But animals can sleep anywhere and everywhere. So essentially, their process of sleeping is simple and we complicate it. Now the second process, eating. They also eat, we also eat. But animals stick to their natural food. They don't experiment. Like, have you ever seen a tiger saying, Aaj main ghas khaunga, aaj main maas nahi khaunga. Possible? Today I'm vegetarian. No, no. But we humans, I just heard somewhere in China, anything they see flying and crawling, they eat. So we are always experimenting. Why? Again, for that extra juice. So we go to any extent just to try and satisfy our senses. And in that, in that pursuit, what happens? We land up with disorders. Have you ever seen, oh, uh, uh, you know, obese tiger, or an obese dog, or an obese any any such animal? Have you ever seen double their weight? No, but you see humans double their weight, right? Average weight for an adult, if it's 75 kgs, you see people 140, 50 kgs also. It's only because of, un, you know, you can say unguided and disproportionate amount of eating. So again, we complicate this simple process. Now come to the next one, enjoyment. Animals also enjoy, we also enjoy, right? But humans can actually exploit their body, their mind, just for the sake of enjoyment. 
they would go to any extent, right? For example, you will have you ever seen uh, a dog sticking, sitting on the street? Oh, my girlfriend ditched me. Have you seen? No, but you see so many people who are depressed. Why? Because they didn't find that enjoyment that they were looking for in a particular relationship example. Right? And again, we complicate this uh, simple enjoyment thing, you know. And when we see all these movies, this Bollywood and Hollywood, they make it even more complicated. So they make us envisage and think of life what is typically not available. And then again, when we have that thing, we're complicating our own expectation. And that's when again we become sad. So again, that one commonality is then the last defense. Now defending. Animals by nature, by instinct, they defend themselves using their teeth, their claws, whatever they have. And we humans have developed hi-fi gadgets to defend ourselves. Not only that, we also ensure that, uh, you know, even in our houses, we ensure that we have adequate locks. Once I, I was passing a particular shop and I noticed on the shutter, there were eight different types of locks he had put. So that concept of defending or, you know, protecting ourselves is so, so high. And this is common. So these are some of the commonalities that you see, you know, between humans and animals. But there's one thing. Now let's come to the differences. And uh, before we come to the differences, do you think animals have intelligence? Do you think animals have intelligence? No. Do you think animals have intelligence? Yes. Who all say animals have intelligence yes. and why? Yes. Okay. I see Janisha raising her hand. Radhika is raising her hand. Sarang is also raising his hand. Okay. You all think animals have intelligence. Why do you think so? Um, I also believe that some animals have intelligence and some don't. Okay. Fair like, enough. A dog has, like a dog has intelligence to stop a thief from robbing in the house or any shops. Right. And the donkey and donkey doesn't have intelligence. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So basically, what is intelligence? Reasoning, questioning, right? And thinking. This is what intelligence is. Logical thinking. All of this is intelligence. So to a certain extent, you're right. Many of the animals have it. But as you only said, they use it only for the basic activities. They use it only for their basic needs of either eating, defending, entertaining or sleeping. But we humans are special, right? Because we have this intelligence and we can use this intelligence for something which is higher. And that is known as ability for higher inquiry. See, every species is unique, okay? Like, can you jump as, as high as, say, a kangaroo? No. Can you eat as much as an elephant? No, right? We cannot do that because that is their USP. So similarly, like we cannot do what they do, we have the intelligence. So we have this four unique things which make us different. Now we're going to talk about the four differences. We spoke about the four commonalities. Now we're going to talk about the four differences. The first difference is this intelligence, the ability for higher inquiry. This is what we have. Now let's look a little deeper into what I mean by ability for higher inquiry. So we can ask these basic questions to ourselves. Who am I? Where do I come from? Right? These are the questions that we can ask ourselves. You can even ask who is God. Do you think the animal can ever think who is God, who has created this entire creation universe? No, they'll never ever do that. Right? So that's ability for... No, I'll, now let me at least tell you, enlist the first and then I'll come back to this. So ability for higher inquiry is one. 
bliss is the second. Experiencing bliss, that's the second difference that we have. Third and most important difference that we have between animals and us is we have the ability to make choices. We can choose what to do. And the fourth is we have the determination to implement all of these. This is essentially what we have. Now, let's take them one by one. Okay. Now, as I was telling you, ability for higher inquiry means thinking deeper, asking yourself. Animals have that intelligence as we discussed, but it's for the basic needs. Like I have seen it myself. Once, uh, so, you know, you dry clothes on your windowsill. So we had a couple of hangers and we would dry our clothes at the win windowsill. One day we noticed that a lot of these hangers are missing. And we were wondering, like, it was right there. Where did it disappear? There's a, you know, grill. So it can't really fall out. After a couple of days, I noticed a bird had used some of these hangers and actually made a nest. So they use their intelligence, but again, for the very basics. So they have intelligence, but they use it for the basics. Now, vis-a-vis -vis human beings, like as you see in the picture, that's Siddhartha, who later was known as Gautam Buddha. I'll tell you his story. So when he was born, his father predicted, he was, the astrologer predicted to his father, your child will be either a very great saint or a very great king. Now, obviously, the father wanted him to be a king because he's a king. He wants his kingdom to expand and, you know, the lineage to continue and so on and so forth. So he became extra cautious. Are Baba, I don't want him to become a sage. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to get him not to become a sage. He said, all the comforts I'll give him. But I will keep him under my monitoring. I will not let him go out only. So everything in the palace, he was given all the comforts, all the luxuries, all the education, all the training, sub kuch first class, but in the palace. He was not allowed to go out. But one day, for some reason, when the king wasn't there, he just told his uh, charioteer, you know, why don't you take me out? On And, and when he went out, he came across things that he had never seen in his life. He saw an ailing man. He was diseased. You know, he had boils all over his body. And he was shocked. He said, like, what is this? And the charioteer told him, this man is diseased. He says, what is disease? Then the charioteer explained to him what disease was. You know, when your body is not perfect and internally or externally, you're diseased. And he was surprised. He was taken back because he'd never seen disease. He moved ahead. He saw a very old man on the street. Very old, you know. And he was like, what is it? He couldn't walk, nothing. And then again, the charioteer told him, sir, he's just an old man. Everybody becomes old. And Siddhartha, till that time, didn't even realize this. He says, oh, really? I will also become like this? And the charioteer told him, yes, your majesty, everybody becomes old. They moved a little further. And then he saw a dead corpse and people were carrying him. And he was wondering, he said, why is this man lying down and everybody's carrying him? The charioteer, who was shocked again because he didn't know how aloof the prince was kept, said, your majesty, he's just a dead man. Everybody has to die. And Siddhartha was taken back. And that is when that pursuit for answering questions came into him. And over a period of time, he transformed from that prince to an uh, evolved sage later on. Now, this inquiry is very basic in us. We have it in us. Sometimes it's covered. It's like you see a mirror. Many a times, if you haven't gone into a room, uh, you know, you'll see that mirror is covered with a layer of dust. And if you try to see yourself, you're not visible very clearly till you clean it. S similarly, all of us are covered with this layer of illusion. And we don't land up asking ourselves these questions. In fact, our scriptures begin with this line. 
Vedanta Sutra begins with this Sanskrit line. It says, Atato Brahma Jigyasa, which essentially means, now that you have a human birth, ask, ask these questions because only you are in this position where you can elevate yourself. Let's look at the case of a goat. Have you seen goats? Particularly at a butcher shop. Has anyone seen? Yes, anyone see goats standing outside the butcher shop? It's a terrible sight, but yes. So what are they doing? They're essentially eating. They are fed, fed and fed so that they become a little plumpish and then the butcher can get more money for that goat. But the goat sitting and eating there they, they, are, they are doing that in a group. That goat will never think, okay, while I'm eating, it will not look up and see all the other carcasses stand, uh, you know, hung up. It will not look up. Neither will it ask that the goat beside me suddenly, where did it disappear? It will not ask. Why? Because it is focusing only on the basics. S-E-E-D, eating, eating, eating. That is what it is focusing on. It doesn't look above that. Have you ever seen a dog looking up at the sky and wondering where did these stars come from? Where did the moon come from? Have you ever seen? No, but we do that, right? We look up at the stars and we wonder, Kya hoga udar? what would it be over there? What would life be? Or what, what would people be doing there? If there would be life over there, there wouldn't be. What is there outside this universe? Right? We, we ask all these questions. I least wonder. Have you ever wondered or no? How many have wondered? Please tell me. Baba, tell me. Either raise your hands or just unmute and say, yes, I wondered. Yes. Yes, yes. I wondered. Baba, yes. whoever hasn't wondered needs a shaking up. Why you haven't wondered? You should be wondering. Because that I read. We are using I... our intelligence only for the basic. Everyone is so engrossed in the gadget and playing games that you are not using your intelligence for other important questions. So we sh should wonder. So coming back to this position, where are we? We're in this human birth where we have this ability to inquire. Now, if we make inquiry, what will happen? We can move higher. And if we don't make inquiry, then we can fall down to the animal species. So this human life is like a junction. You know, a train junction. Over there, you get the option of choosing multiple trains. Right? If you go to any of these important train junctions, you can choose multiple trains. Say, if you go to Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus or you go to Bombay Central, from there in Mumbai, I'm talking about, then you can choose. You can take a train to Delhi. You can take one to Calcutta, Bangalore, so on and so forth. Similarly, this human life is like a junction. If we make inquiries, that's when which will take us higher. If we don't make inquiries, we can fall down to the animal species. Now coming to the next aspect, which is bliss. Now Sarang had asked this question on chat, what is bliss? So I'm going to be explaining that. Okay. Now, bliss, happiness, sorry. Happiness is explained in English in a very simple way. That is... Happiness. English has only one word. Happiness, bliss, that's what the way they explain. But if we were to look at it a little deeper, Sanskrit gives us deeper meaning. So Sanskrit is a watertight language. Every word has a very specific meaning. Okay. Now, for example, happiness means sukha, being happy. Main sukhi hu, right? You hear that very often. So what is happiness? Mostly it is sukha. But there is something above Sukha also, which is known as Ananda. And that is what bliss is, Ananda. Now, let me explain the difference between the two. Sukha is temporary or fleeting. And Ananda is permanent. That is the essential difference. Sukha is temporary. It comes and it goes. So, Sukha literally could also be said as the gap between two miseries is known as Sukha. 
So you have misery, sukha, again misery, again sukha. So that gap is sukha. You're happy for that time. But ananda is when you're totally blissful. You don't need anything. So sukha is also dependent on things externally. Ananda or bliss depends on things which are more internally. It does not require external validation. Okay? Now, so Sukha, did you understand when I said the gap between two miseries? Did you all understand that concept? Or should I give an example? Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, okay, there's a prisoner. Prisoners are normally tortured by the police to get them to straighten up. So many a time, some of these prisoners who don't open their mouth, you know, if they're if they have some very important information and they don't open their mouth, you know what the police does? The police will take the prisoner's neck, put it in water, till the time he is gasping for breath and pull it out again, and then again he'll take a breath, <gasps> and then again they'll put him in. So for that prisoner, what is sukha? The moment he's out and he can take that deep breath. <gasps> That is Sukha. Because again, he's going back to misery. Externally dependent. And Ananda is something which is internal, where you're blissful. That's why they say children are blissful. Why? Why? Because they still don't, they haven't understood or they haven't got into the rat race. And you know, they're not running behind things, grades, trophies, validation, friends, all of that. That's the reason they are always blissful. So, ananda is something which comes from internal. And when you're internally happy, externals don't make a difference. It's a state of your heart. Ananda comes from within. Another thing that the Bhagavad Gita explains is that the spirit soul that we are is Sat, Chit and Ananda. So, there are three qualities of the soul. Sat, Chit and Ananda. Eternal, blissful and full of knowledge. So being blissful is one of the qualities of the soul. So we have the right to be blissful. But the externals around us don't make us so blissful. But we're in search of that bliss. And that is the reason we're trying to understand how to be blissful and how to always be happy. So this entire course, journey of self-discovery, is about discovering happiness. But we're going to take it slow and steadily. That's the reason we're going to spend the first two sessions only understanding deeply, you know, happiness, concept of happiness, and differences and all of that. Okay? Now we come to the third aspect. The third difference between humans and animals is we can make choices. We have the power to make choices. But animals cannot choose. Like I was telling you, animals go by instinct and humans have the option of choosing. Okay? Animals don't have the freedom of choice. Like I gave you the example uh, of the tiger, right? He'll never think, Ke aaj main ghas no, he'll not think that. Or a cow will never say, today I'm bored of eating grass, today I'm going to try eating some flesh. Never. They will not get bored. They are conditioned. They will go purely based on instinct. This is what it is. So basically, because they are guided by instinct, they don't have the power of choice. They can't choose. We have the power to make a choice. Like today, we can decide no more non-vegetarian food from tomorrow. Why? Why should I kill a living entity? Why should I kill somebody only to satisfy my taste buds? I have the power of choice, right? I have the power to choose that. That is what makes us special. But animals cannot do that. Any situation, animals will purely go by instinct. And humans have that power to choose. And different people will respond differently. Accept it? Something like what you do and say what your sister does will be different. What you do and your, what your brother will do will be different. Because each one of us have a different conditioning, a different... Uh, intelligence right and thereby we decide to use our choices also differently and how and this this one difference now kids remember 
is most critical because our life is all about choices. The life that we are currently living and the life that we will get in future is all based on the power of choices. So this one difference between us and animals, everyone should understand very clearly. You are what you choose to be. Give you another example. Two kids are born. Right? One is born on the street, poor, handicapped. Another one is born in an aristocratic family, very rich. Why? Why? Any guesses why? They are innocent kids. They are just born. Why? Why is the difference? This is because of the choices they have made in their previous lives. And we will go detailed on day 5. Session 5 we will be very detailed because this is what we need to learn. Because we all want a better life, right? Current life and future lives. So power of choices is very important. I'll tell you one story. In fact, I'll tell you two different stories. Both for choices, okay? So you'll understand this concept and how important it is to make the right choices and what do you need to make the right choices. So one story is again from uh, Lord Gautam Buddha's uh, pastime. So once, uh, he's a sage now and sages normally preach, they send good messages, they always want the good of everyone. So that's what he was doing. But there are always people who are envious, jealous, not liking it, you know, because others are respecting him, giving him that due respect. So once one such person, after he had finished a discourse, came to him and he said, you know, started blaspheming him, giving him abusives. Whatever you've spoken is rubbish, this, that, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. And Buddha is just quiet and calm. But his friend who's with him, is getting very angry and agitated, you know. And Lord Buddha is just telling him, chill, relax, you know. And he's not affected. So this man spurts up and abuses and then just goes away. And Lord Buddha is just relaxed and smiling. And this friend is telling him, what's wrong with you? You know, you were abused at and why didn't you react? Why didn't you respond? You know, you should have given it back to him. And Lord Buddha just smiles and tells him, if I give you a thousand gold coins and you don't accept it, what will happen? He says, I'll not accept it. It will be with you. He says, but what if I force you to take those gold coins and you still don't take it? He says, okay, it will still be with you. And he says, okay, then I come to you and I abuse you and I start telling you, Pagal hai kya? Free mein mil hai. why are you not taking it? But you still don't take it. Then I start abusing you. Donkey, take it. But you still don't take it. So ultimately, those thousand gold coins are with you or with me. So what does his friend tell him? What is the answer? Where, where are the thousand gold coins? With Buddha or with his friend? With whom? Buddha, Buddha right? Buddha. Exactly. So he says, yes, they are with you. And Lord Buddha is telling him, this is exactly what I did with this man. He is giving me whatever he wanted to, but I didn't take it only, Baba. When I am not taking it only, it will lie with whom? With him only. Then this friend understood how you have to be unaffected. That is also your choice to be affected or unaffected by somebody else's behavior is your choice. And don't we face this every day? Right? In our lives, we see this every day. One teacher can tell you something. You're a donkey. Are, will I become a donkey if somebody tells me I'm a donkey? No. One friend tells me you're this. Will I become that? Somebody tells you something else. Will you become that? No. So when you understand that not being affected by others' behavior is also your choice, is a choice you're making. Okay? Now I'll tell you one more story. 
again about choices. So once, and this is a true story told to me by one of the brahmacharis in the temple. So they go for preaching. So they had gone to one of the villages. And uh, so when they are preaching, they are preaching to various kinds of people. So once they were in one of the places where they a rehab, basically, you know, people who are addicted to alcohol, they are sent to a rehab so that they can get out of this addiction. So they went, they were preaching in the rehab and they came across this uh, drunkard. So he planned up talking to him that, why are you wasting your life? You know, human life is precious. And he was telling him all of this. You're living like an animal. Why are you doing this to yourself? Uh, you're just, you know, time is just passing and you're just drinking and doing nothing. So this man told him, you know what? Throughout my life, I have seen my father only drinking. He was an alcoholic. That's why I'm an alcoholic. That's the answer that he gave him. And this brahmachari tried a lot to explain, but this man was in his own world. He was drunk. He was not willing to really listen and understand. So that brahmachari stayed there for a couple of days in that village. And uh, so they were trying to do certain activities. So you need the permission of police and you need a lot of that. So he had gone to the police station also. And at the police station, he came across this wonderful cop. Very cooperative, very duty bound. He was perfect. So again, he started chatting with him, the brahmachari, and was telling him that I'm really impressed. You know, you're doing your work so beautifully, so well, everything so good. And again, looking at a brahmachari, he opened his heart up. And he started telling him, you know, I've had a terrible childhood. And the brahmachari asked him, why, what happened? He said, you know what? My dad was an alcoholic. All I saw him throughout the day was drinking and just sleeping and wasting his life. I decided I am never going to do that. And the brahmachari was shocked. My father was a drunkard. I became a drunkard. He had me mila. He's saying, I just decided not to be a drunkard. Then the brahmachari ended up asking him some more questions. And you know what he realized? Both these guys are brothers. Same father. So what did they do? One decided or chose to become like his father. One chose to become not like his father. So again, we have the power to choose what we want to do. Interesting, isn't it? Every day in our life, we are making choices. Every day. And we and all these choices, we have to take responsibility of that. Because they are all going to give some result. Sooner or later, all these choices have some result. And that is the reason you have to make these choices very, very carefully. All right? You know, it's like many a times, why it is important is because... As I was giving the earlier example, also, somebody will scream at you. Somebody will call you something. But that doesn't make you that. So when you act based on others' response, what you're basically doing, you know, you're giving the remote control of your life to somebody else. If somebody is happy with you and they praise you, you are happy. If somebody is angry with you, they scream at you, you're sad. So that means what? Your happiness is based on somebody else's action or words. That means what? The remote control of your life is in somebody else's hand. Why should you do that? We have to choose to keep it in our hand. So happiness is also by choice. And making these choices is important. Very, very important. Okay? Now coming to the fourth difference. That is essentially, okay, this I've told you, we have the power to choose, okay? Determination. Now, by determination, what do I mean? We humans have this ability in us, ki ye to main karunga, ye to main nahi karunga. I will do this, I will not do this. Animals do not have that. And thereby, when we have this determination, we can ensure that we do A, B, and C properly. That means, we ensure we make higher inquiry or we use our intelligence. We want to experience bliss. And third is we make the right choices. This is how we can ensure 
that we rise above and not be like animals. If we don't use this potential now of ABCD, then we're actually down like animals. And the Mahabharata says that in the Mahabharata, there's this beautiful verse which says, if the humans do not utilize this special ability that is given to them and stick to the basic, they are no better than two-legged, sophisticated animals. Human life is very, very special. I'll tell you one more last story before we end and get into discussion to tell you how important it is. Okay. But before that, if we do not utilize our intelligence, we can actually get worse than animals. Do you agree or no? I'll tell you some cases yeah. where you can actually understand how we can get worse than animals. Any guesses how we can get worse than animals? I have a couple of points, but any other guesses that you all have how we can get worse than animals? Whatever, no? what animals do we copy when we copy what animals do? No, okay. What else? How can we get worse than animals? Chalo, let's let's get into point in point by one. We land up abusing our body, right? Sleeping pills, sleeping is 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 natural to every human. But if we do not use our intelligence, then what happens? We land up abusing our body. And one of the abuses is taking sleeping pills. Have you ever seen an animal do that? Second is we are a threat to ourselves. Animals defend, but we are humans are actually a threat to our humans only. And that's the reason you have so much of war and all of this. Scarcity is another thing. Animal will take how much it needs and it will be satisfied. But humans create artificial scarcity. So if there's a bag of rice lying on the on, on the road, you'll see a bird will come, it will take how much ever it wants and it will fly away, right? But if a human passes by, what will he do? He'll pick up the entire bag and he'll take it home. Not only that, to make profits, we land up creating scarcity. Right? The, the price of Products go up like today, put it, uh, tomatoes in India, particularly in Bombay, are, are up to 150 rupees a kg. Why? Because of artificial scarcity, somebody wants to make extra profit. Heartbreaks. Again, a common thing which is there in humans, not in animals. As I told you, Kabhi dekha hai? any dog says, Oh, my girlfriend, me ko chhod ke chali gai. ever heard that? No. Right? Stress management. Today, kids, fourth standard, third standard, fifth standard, oh, I'm stressed. Are Baba, you're just born. Why are you stressed? Because of bad lifestyle, because of bad time management. Addictions. When we don't find solutions, what do humans do? They take up to addiction. They'll take up to alcohol. They take up to drugs. Why? Temporary thinking that the problem is not there. Addiction is nothing but keeping yourself in another world which doesn't exist. It's illusionary. You're trying to run away from the problem rather than trying to solve it. And why do you do that? Again, because of lack of intelligence, lack of determination. That's the reason you do that. And the worst is suicide. Have you ever seen a dog said, oh, my life is over. I'm going to hang myself on the fan. No. But you have, unfortunately, humans doing that. You know, students doing it. Why? I didn't get 99. I got 98. I came second in class. I didn't come first. Ridiculous. Or some other reason. Now, human life is so precious. You're right up there. And if you decide to end that life, is the worst thing you can do to yourself. Because you can end this physical body, but you are the spirit soul. You cannot ever be killed or die. You never die. That is one of the nature of or one of the uh, qualities of the soul. You can kill it. You cannot burn it. You cannot chop it. Nothing you can do with it. All right. So that's one of the three critical qualities. Okay. Now coming to the story. Just give me a second.
Okay. So this is the story that I'm going to end with. So once there was this farmer and uh, so he took part in one of these lotteries, you know, and he landed up winning a beautiful Porsche. Imagine a farmer landed up winning this beautiful Porsche and he comes back in that Porsche and you know what he lands up doing? He lands up using that Porsche to plow the field. Is that a good idea? No, no. That's exactly what we are. We are this human life is this Porsche. And, and animal life is this life of a tractor. So if we utilize this Porsche for basic of sleeping, eating, entertaining and defending, then we are using our lottery ticket in the wrong way. We are wasting our lottery ticket like that farmer. But we need to be elevated and we need to use our A, B, C, D to move up and get to understanding ourselves better, get to introspect better, right? So this is part one, what we've done today of the title was In Search of Happiness. And this is the first thing. Can you all, all still hear me? Because I'm just seeing some weird message pop up. Okay. Hang on. Okay. So this is essentially where we stop today, but open for discussion where we will be continuing. Today we discuss what? We are all looking for happiness. And not only us, it's also the animal species that are looking for happiness. But we are different from animals. We are evolved. And thereby, we should not stick to S-E-E-D, right? We should use our intelligence and go for A, B, C, D. That's how we elevate ourselves. And that's how we pursue ourselves for happiness. Next time, we will try and understand a little more about what happiness is and then how we seek that. And then we will move further introspecting ourselves and so on and so forth. Now, the last couple of minutes, we've kept for question and answers. Anybody has anything to ask about today's session? Anything you want to say, you want to share? Please, and the ones who've kept their camera shut throughout the session, at least show us your face now so we know what you look like and you've been in the session. Yes. Yes. 